Harry here from Chat Spanish. Lo le las, you've heard of these before. They're known as the object pronouns in Spanish. They're confusing, but I'm going to simplify it massively for you in today's video. We're going to run through some examples just so you have it crystal clear. All right, chicos, make sure you also like this video. You better do that. Leave some comments. What sort of stuff do you want to see in the future? And please do uh, subscribe to the channel. It means the world to me. So let's get into it. Vamos. Lo, la, les, lo. You've seen them. You might not understand them, but we're going to clarify it in this slideshow. So there are two types of object pronouns in Spanish. You have the direct object pronoun and we have the indirect object pronoun. And basically object pronouns replace the object in a sentence and direct object pronouns uh, are essentially directly affected by the action of the verb in the sentence and indirect uh, object pronouns are indirectly uh, affected uh, by the action of the verb in the sentence. Don't worry about this too much. It will become clear in some examples. So the direct object pronouns, these need to be learned. We have a table here. We have lo and la, and we have los and las. So lo, la can mean him, which is lo, masculine, la, her, it and you, and you here being usted, the formal version. We have yo, tu, and el, ella, usted. So we're talking about the third person here, guys. And then we also have los and las, again, masculine and feminine. And that means them or you all, um, so you plural. And then the indirect object pronouns, we don't have a distinction between masculine and feminine. So that's nice. It's just le for to him, to her, to it, to you, and less to them, to you all. So no, no masculine or feminine here. And the two. All right. So a recap, direct object pronouns. You'll need to remember these. Lo, la, los, and las. And indirect, we just have le and less. So we're going to run through some examples. Simple sentence here, leo el libro. Leo being the first person conjugation of the present tense of the verb leer, leo, I read, el libro, and the book, right, the noun. So now the question is, someone could ask me, did you read the book? And I could say, yes, I read the book. Or I could say, yes, I read it. And that it there is an example of an object pronoun. So it avoids me having to say the book again. All right. And you'll sound like a pro speaker when you get this. Lo leí. I read. The preterite tense. Lo. It. Now, how did we get to lo? So let's go back to our tables and take a little browse. Well, okay. So it. I'm looking for it. Uh, it's not going to be here. Okay. It could be here. Lo la. Well, el libro is masculine, so it's going to be lo, potentially. Now, indirect object pronouns, we just have one to choose from, to it. No, it's just, I didn't read to it, I read it. So, yeah, lo, I'm happy with lo. Correct, okay. And then a quick note I want to say as well is that object pronouns, so both direct and indirect, come before verb conjugations. So, quieres here, present tense, lo quieres. So it's not quieres lo, it's lo quieres. Or indirect here, le vi, I saw, preterite tense, ayer, yesterday, I saw her or him yesterday. So they come before and you'll see more examples of that. Now, next one, I read the book to her. So how would we, how would we go about this one? Uh, I read, leí, again, the preterite tense, el libro, the book. So we're not using it, to her. Right, let's look at our tables again. Okay, so her, direct object, uh, feminine, la, maybe, or indirect, to her, okay, here we go, only one option, it's le. So, le, leí, el libro, I read the book, to her, or to him, actually, so context is important here, but we know we're wanting to say to her, and again, remember, it's placed before the conjugation of the verb here in the preterite tense, so, le, leí el libro. Now, it's getting interesting. I read it to her. So, we've seen both of these. How do we combine them? Well, I read, leí, we know that. It, we know it here is lo, because it's relating to the book, el libro, which is a masculine noun. And to her, we know it's going to be le. So, right, le, lo, leí. So, remember, they always come before the verb, the conjugation of the verb, I should say. And actually, there's another rule we need to learn, which is the indirect object pronoun. Here, le, always comes before the direct object pronoun. 
if they're used in the same sentence. And now also you might know le lo leí. Sounds a bit crazy and actually that's because it is. And an annoying little rule you have to remember is when we have the indirect object pronoun before the direct object pronoun, the indirect object pronoun uh, uh, changes to se. So it would be se lo leí. Okay, se lo leí. And here we go. Indirect objects always come before direct object pronouns and they change to se. So more examples. So it wouldn't be le lo vendió. It's se lo vendió. And se lo compraste. Did you buy it, something feminine for him or to her? Se lo compraste. Did you buy it for her? Here, se. Okay. And actually an interesting one to really specify because of context here, se. If you just saw this like this, she or he sold it, se, to her or to him. We don't know if it's to her or to him. So you can actually add a a el or a ella at the end of the sentence. So se lo vendió a ella. He or she sold it to her. Little pro tip. And here we go, guys. I just want to spell this out, really make it clear. So we had we started with a general sentence, leo el libro. And now in the book, we replace that with it, leí lo. Sorry, lo leí. Never say leí lo. It sounds weird. That's why uh, I corrected myself. And that here, lo, is the direct object pronoun. Then we have le, leí, el libro. I read it, the, I read the book to him or to her. And then we obviously had the combined here, which is a tricky one. We'll get used to it, but it changes. The indirect object pronoun changes to se, and it comes before the direct object pronoun. So I read it to him or to her. And I want to go through now some placement rules for the... Uh, object pronoun. So you've already seen that they they come before verb conjugations. But if we're talking about infinitives, so these are not conjugated. It's just ar, ir, or er verbs. It comes afterwards here. It's quite a nice one to just attach on. Quiero jugarlo. I want to play it. And you could actually say lo quiero jugar because remember this is the verb conjugation of the infinitive querer. So it comes before that. Lo quiero jugar. Or I always go for just attaching it on the end of the infinitive. It's super easy to do when you're in mid-sentence. And the gerund now. So that's jugando, uh, tomando, uh, haciendo. Is it usually, well, it can come, again, it just whacks on the end of the gerund. So no estoy haciéndolo. It could come before this verb conjugation of estar. No lo estoy haciendo. But easy option is no estoy haciéndolo. And usually there will not be accent. There's not an accent here. It's just haciendo. But when you add this, the uh, the object pronoun on at the end, you've got to emphasize that haciéndolo. And you'll notice that as you go through some examples, guys. Another one, the affirmative imperative, imperative here. So a command, ábrelo, entráele, la comida. It goes after. It's always after. So it's not lo abre o lo trae. It's ábrelo y tráele. And you, you hit, it's nice, nice rhythm to it, especially when someone's shouting at you in Spanish in a, in a command. And a negative imperative, however, it becomes before that. So, no lo abras, don't open it. It's not, no abras lo. And again, you'll, you'll, you'll understand, it just sounds a bit odd. So those need to be learned as well as what the actual direct object pronouns and indirect object pronouns are. And I just want to finish again with a couple of examples. Se lo vendió. He or she uh, sold lo, it. We know that's a masculine noun. Se, again, I just want to highlight here that the indirect object pronoun comes before the direct object pronoun and changes to se. And we don't know here if it's a, a el or a ella unless we add it on the end. So again, the context is super important here. But you'll usually use them mid-conversation uh, mid with someone when you know the exact context. And here again, lo veo, I see that could be it, or it could be him, all right? So remember, it's not always obvious which it is. And that's that. So I hope that has cleared things up. But my recommendation is practice, practice, practice on this and really make sure you have the fundamentals down and you've learned these rules. And it's a really fun one when you get to, get to master it because you sound like a master yourself. And those were the object pronouns in Spanish. So I hope it's cleared things up for you. And now you're ready to tackle it head on and become a pro Spanish speaker. Again, please do like this video, leave some comments, leave some feedback, any questions you have, 
and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Also check out the website chatspanish.online and put your name in the little box on the landing page and you can sign up for the newsletter. Ciao chicos.